So the real power of MapReduce is how it can scale across an entire cluster of computers, how you can actually take a huge data set and split it out into multiple pieces and have individual computers out there just chug away on individual chunks of it. So how does that work? Let's talk about that in more depth. So let's talk about how Hadoop can actually scale that MapReduce job across a cluster and how that works in more detail. So conceptually, this is how it works. So you start with some huge data repository and this will be stored someplace where Hadoop can get at it, like on an HDFS file system or some file system that Hadoop knows how to communicate with. For example, um, Amazon has a file system called S3 and it's Elastic MapReduce service that we'll talk about more in a little bit, knows how to talk to it and import it into HDFS. Now Hadoop will potentially split that big data set up into various chunks and it will feed pieces of it to individual mappers that could be running on different computers, different CPUs, different processes. Who knows? It, it can use as much hardware as you throw at it. And uh, you know this scales pretty much indefinitely depending on how many systems or CPUs you throw at the problem. So each mapper gets a chunk of the input data and it is generating key value pairs. And what happens is under the hood eventually individual keys along with all their values will be mapped to a specific reducer. So you know, let's say key number one ends up going into mapper number one here. One of these reducers will be assigned to handle all the processing for key number one. So it would always go to say reducer three if it was number one. Now let's say another value for key number one comes into mapper three. Again, it will have to go to mapper three to reducer three because the same reducer will always handle the same key values. So that's what's happening in this little mess here. Basically Hadoop is managing who talks to who in terms of mappers and reducers to ensure that even though mappers may be processing information for any key, the reducers are receiving a consistent set of information for a given key. So the reducers, again, receive all of the values for a given key. Going back to our original example, let's say we're doing the movie lens data. To be more concrete, the mappers would be processing all of the movies viewed by each individual user, and each mapper might be getting multiple different movies watched by a given user. So it's kind of a hodgepodge, you know, we're just distributing the mapping task at this stage, but the reducer will always receive all of the movies watched for a given user. So each reducer will receive, will be responsible for processing some set of users and all of the movies that those users watched. And finally, as the reducers output their output for a given set of users, those all get output to a final result, again, stored in HDFS or in the cloud somewhere where you can get at it later, where it might be then piped back to your system. So at a high level, we can have multiple computers running different mappers that are responsible for processing different chunks of your input data. And different computers can be responsible for reducing that data as well. So you can also have as many reducer computers as you want that are responsible for processing the values for each given key that they receive. And this is how Hadoop scales and how MapReduce can scale across very large data sets. So it's divide and conquer. You split up the job of processing all the input data and you split up the jobs of actually processing all of the data for the entities that you care about, and they all get combined together in the end. So you can see the real power of Hadoop and MapReduce and how it all fits together to let you do really big things with really big data sets. You know, things that you can never run on one computer, you can now distribute that load among many computers and do much bigger things and, you know, analyze huge data sets of huge amounts of people's behavior. So the possibilities are endless. Let's talk about how you can actually harness that power yourself right from your desktop next.